We're here. Welcome to the podcast, yes. everybody. Welcome Brotherly back. Brotherly Love Podcast. Happy Friday. Happy, happy Friday. Friday. Happy Friday. Um, guys. It's just us today. It's a throwback episode. Yep. We've, just I us. feel like we've been on long enough now where we can almost say we have a throwback episode. When this little show started... <laughs> Uh, Three months ago. No, when this no, little engine longer than that. Seven, eight months, nine months, ten months. Uh, it's been months. That's all I know. Hasn't been years yet. We haven't gotten to our year anniversary, no, but we will get there. Fun. Thanks to you guys. It what looks a fun like we're going to get there. Woo! Will we have a, a celebration? Well, heck yeah, we're going to have a celebration. The, you know what we'll do is we'll invite our some of our favorite guests over yeah. the entire year. And we'll have a party. We'll have a little party. You know what? It's a great And everybody idea. can get on the or mic. Maybe, like, like randomly, we'll all yeah. get on the mic, but everybody's got, somebody's got to be on the mic. Yeah, of course. And then we'll all be in the background, like, yeah. drinking yeah. Probably yep. not going to happen. It's not going to happen. What would be fun it is, is if we had wow, all of our so. favorite guests write us, like, a little anecdote. And yeah. we read them. Yes. Oh. Oh, like, my favorite part about being on the podcast was Andy. Yeah. Well, that's, of course, what you would think they would yes. say. Yes. They'll just say that. Was Andy the smartest, cutest, most talented Lawrence? Andy, who wrote this? <laughs> I don't know. Andy, mm -hmm. this is by Andy. With, this is love with Andy. Bambi eyelashes. <laughs> love with, Andy. It's with pig Latin. <laughs> yeah, like, he just love Andy. E and, uh, right, right. I don't uh, know. Anyway, guys, welcome. Welcome back, guys. It's, it's, Thanks for it's, joining it's us. It's throwback, and then it's just us today. Yeah. No guests in studio. It's no. just a bunch of brotherly love in here. That's what it is. Oh, oh yeah. Little plug for the pod. Joe, mm -hmm. we're, they're watching it. You don't need to plug it. When it's, it's an in pod commercial for the pod. We're doing it live. <laughs> Oh, really love podcast coming to you live every Friday. Um, what are we talking about today? Well, you know what I want to talk about. Oh, I want to talk well, about that's the first thing I don't want to hear. Uh, that you want to talk about? Okay. Well, competition and competition shows. Have you ever done any competition reality shows? Joe always shows? says. Joe always says it's it's it's. What did you What do you say? You don't need to. They're not good. No. You, no what, what do I say? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no. What do there's I say? No need to. There's no need to compete if it's not a competition. That's or it's true. not a competition what? if you've already won or something yeah, like that. Yeah. That's, that's that's what he says. <laughs> yeah. All the time. Right. That's totally. what Michael Jordan said. Yeah. 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 There's no competition. I always win. Matt. No. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, I, I just like well, ganging up on Matt. Yeah, it's fun. Have I it done? Is fun. Have I done a competition show? Well, Matt, you know the answer to that. Don't ask rhetorical questions. I think you did okay? one. Yes. Yes, I did. I did it. Yes, I did. I did Dancing with the Stars mm. uh, back when a lot of people watched it. You know, they <laughs> they took it off. Well, it's crazy because the season that I did it. You remember it was that? Mm. I mean, you can't. You, you no one knew going in. No. But it was that Mario Lopez, Emmett Smith, and myself, like. Mm. And honestly, like, we were all super competitive, mm -hmm. so it wasn't a joke. Like, I think episode two or whatever, I got, either Mario got tens, and then I got tens, and then Emma got tens, and then it was just like, oh, man, it's 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 on. And we got to the finals, the three of us, you know? But Did you ever was, brawl with huh? Mario or Twinkle Toes? Uh, I, uh, yeah, I mean. Isn't that what they called Emmett, Twinkle Toes? Wasn't that his name? I think that was, yeah. What? Yeah, his name was, well, I think well, I think Len, no, one of the, one of the judges. Football. Nickname was it? Look it up. I don't know. Twinkle what am I Google? Twinkle toes? I'd be shocked if that was the case. Like, I don't know. Shocked. His favorite song was Twinkle Little Star. Maybe that's what you're thinking no, about. No, no, it wasn't. No, no. Um, but at any rate, so it ended up being a juggernaut, and you know it was like 20 plus million people a week watched that that's show. Impressive. Believe it or not. Yeah, and that was way back because they 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 were they were doing two seasons a year, mm. so it was way back. I think season three. I mean, if you can imagine this. Um, but. At any rate, then they, then obviously like it went on and went on and, you know, as all shows, they can't stay that popular. So it, and then they put on Disney plus and it was a disaster and now it's coming back to ABC. Mm. They're like, oh, this, this doesn't work. Yeah. Cause it's a live show. Yeah. It doesn't make The whole sense. point of it's live. Yeah. It didn't You're not going to come into a streamer for something live. Turns out that uh, I was completely wrong. Perfect. And that his name was not Twinkle. I did. It was Emmett Smith. Was. Uh, everybody knew that. That's his name. Nicknames Catch 22. That's what it says. His nickname was. His number was. Uh, he didn't 22. really have a. He didn't. So he didn't have one. Where'd you get the Twinkle Toes? That's really know. hilarious. Maybe actually. I just nicknamed him Twinkle Toes. I, I don't know if he's gonna like. He that was a one. tremendous dancer. He was. He was a great dancer. He, <laughs> he was. He he, he he won the whole thing. Yeah, he did. He did. He won the well, whole thing. I mean, he won the whole thing. You know. Yeah. It was rigged, but he won the whole <laughs> thing. Well, that's no. I was going to talk about this. Uh, this, but anyway, yes, I want to talk to you about this competition thing because I did a competition Why? cooking. Oh show. yeah 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 and. Yeah. I went in there going, oh boy, you know, I, I'm really gonna have to step it up. I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. That was right. worse cook, so I get it, right? But um, <laughs> I'm really gonna have to step on my bad cooking. But what I what I got I got in there, and by episode two, I realized that it was cast, and even though it was playing out as if who's going to win, they had already had it all planned. Yeah, they, look, there's always been a debate in these so shows. So I yeah. was really bummed out because 
it took the all that like it was like that moment when you uh, uh, there's a moment in this in the Andy Kaufman story that, that Jim Carrey did was it what was it called yeah man, um, the moon. Man, man, the man the moon do you remember he's searching he's searching because Andy Kaufman was sick with cancer and he and he was trying to desperately find a cure so right. I'll never forget this scene because Jim Carrey he's, he played it brilliantly and he's I mean he's, he so, was great he was man. almost like identical to Andy Kaufman he was. and he's searching and he brought so much heart to it and his last ditch hope to try to cure himself from cancer was this. Um, Eastern medicine guy. And he pulls the cancer literally out of his victims, or so Andy Kaufman or this Jim Carrey playing the character thought. And he goes there, and as he's getting wheeled up to finally get his cancer pulled out of him, he notices, he can see the guy, the, the doctor who's supposedly pulling the cancer out, grab a piece of meat from under the table before he pretends to pull it out of no. the person's body. And I'll never forget the look on his face when he realized <clears throat> yeah. it was a sham. Yeah, and it wasn't that deep, but that's the same feeling I had. Yeah. Is that I genuinely went what into if you were like it was a sham. Wow, a sham wow, sham wow, the sham wow, wow. The sham wow yeah, guy. Yeah. yeah, where is he? Did yet? He still ever... sounds. He got in trouble. I feel like I think he did get in trouble. I think I heard he got. He in was trouble. chopping nuts for a minute. He had, he had a uh, chopper. Uh, 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 yeah, that's right. Uh, what was it sham called? Wow. It was. It was I don't know. You could chop anything. He said this. This. Yeah, my nuts. that's right. That's right. He said something like my nuts, yeah, and everybody yeah, was laughing because like, uh, it was like very uh, uh, su um, suggestive. Yeah, but I got so I got really uh, disenfranchised with um, competition reality shows for that matter because I, of the Andy Kaufman movie. Well, yes, exactly. No, because I, I, I went. In, I thought those? I thought if you really tried hard, that's and, not real cancer. And really improved. Well, like, like, man, that would be marked. <laughs> that would be marked in how you get to advance in the show. But really, it's just like any other show that's pretty much cast, and they have you pretty much slotted within one or two spots. Well, you know, I feel I feel that. Uh, there was always a lot of debate as to how much finagling was going on behind the scenes, Dancing with the Stars. You know, whether the whether the audience vote and, and the judges votes, and then the producers, and then, you know, I, I, yeah. I mean, there was certainly a scenario there that played out with our competition. You know, how it turned out, you know, I don't know. Well, I, I, I heard another something, but I don't oh, know if we can talk about that. Oh, what'd you hear? I'm sure. Do you really can. want me to know? Do you really want me to say it? <sighs> I mean, I don't know. What is it? It's, it's not a great cool. implication. Oh, fantastic. What are we talking um, about? Andy's asleep. Um, he just woke <clears throat> up. Yeah. What, what do you What do you want to say? I had the um, the opportunity to kind of be around that show later on after you, right? From my right. only my personal uh, experience. Life. Yes, and, it was um, rigged. It was rigged. I'm really not sure that we could be airing this. Probably little. won't be able to. I 100 percent did not buy a single vote. Oh, I know you did. Edit and I did not. No, so. I know you didn't. Yeah. The sham wow guy cleans up his act. Andy's left. Yeah. Is this a card here that says, the chair formerly sat in by Andy. Oh, he even changed his last name. He went back to Mignona. He's full Mignona now. Uh, no, uh, the sham wow guy has returned after a sex scandal to clean up his there act. There it is. With a new product, Invincible. That's it was a, not necessarily the name I would it, choose. It's, it's, it's funny, though, that he was a, he, he, the clean up his act. The sham wow guy. Guys, this article goes on. You can't make this up. Listen to this. It isn't just a six- in one kitchen cleaner, though, it's a comeback. Interesting. <laughs> Four years after getting into a slugfest with an alleged prostitute. <laughs> what? An incident Wait, that spawned- he brawled with a prostitute? Yeah, that, that, that spawned a cringeworthy mugshot in headlines, Sham Wow Guy Beats Up Cannibal Hooker. <laughs> the informational pitch guy who became Cannibal famous- Cannibal Hooker? As an irreverent version of Billy Mays is launching a new product that's supposed to scrub persistent stains. Offer says, uh, I don't know. It, it goes Dude, on. You can't. What? He said this product probably saved my life. From the cannibal hookers? Yeah. Fame didn't change me. But money can buy anything. And with it, you <laughs> want more girls around you. This is what he's saying. Oh, my gosh. Wait. It goes on, guys. I'm not going to read anymore. Is he it's from Jersey? I don't know what it he's from. sounds like he's from Jersey. I don't know. But I don't understand. Look, and I can't verify any of that. I was Googling it. That article I, came I'm up. I'm just so confused. I, wasn't, I mean, that's I think honestly a, I on think there. a fist fight with a hooker would have been enough. The cannibal. Yeah. Really well, freeing. she tried to eat him. That's why he was beaten. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's Stop horrible. Stop it. Horrible. <laughs> ah, no, oh I'm God. a man. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't, what are we talking about? This I is horrible. Know. You started with competition. Now we're into cannibal. <laughs> cannibal hookers in this show. I mean, this guy. is terrible. Do we, I, I, do we ever get, we get competitive. Of course we get Have you ever been in a brawl with a cannibal hooker? No, but I've gotten into a fight before. Me too. Yeah. I got into one fight once. You're not really a fighter, Jim. I'm a lover, not a fighter. Yeah, you're not. I'm a lover, not a fighter. Yeah. 
No, 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 no. That's actually a good mashup, though. That'd be good for a DJ. See? Right. I love your smile. And hold on, wait. Ready? On two. Well, I understand the way she feels oh. when she says she's yours, not mine. Well, that's the other song. Sending yeah. roses and your silly games. Really just a waste of time because she's mine. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Dig it, the doggone girl is mine. That's where he goes, you know, oh, well, I told you, Michael. Mm. She said I'm a forever lover, don't you remember? Mm. After loving me, she said she couldn't love another. Oh, yeah. But he said, I'm a lover, not a fighter, in that I song. Get it now. Oh, dude, that song, by the way, great song. If you want, that is a amazing song. The modulation. She's mine. Oh, no, no, she's mine. Great. The girl is mine. So good. Dude, so love good. it. So what are you uh, wide eyeing us, Andy? You were just joining in. I was, but then I see he aborts. He's like, I know. Well, I understand. Well, Do it. <clears throat> These guys are. Nuts. I read the room. <laughs> I, I, just I, I read the room. You know, it's good for read the room. She's mine. Here. That's cool. Gosh, darn girl is mine. That's nice. But then when it's I understand the ways of us, and that's when the eyes go wide and I start. To I was think, reading the room, I'm and by, by the room he meant lunatics. his reflection, because nobody else is in here. I, I was know. reading my. Own, I was reading my own mind, my own personal feelings. <laughs> I could read my mind. You know that joke. Some people say it's a gift, but I can read my own mind. Your thoughts? Yes. For some reason now I want to do this montage of like us going over this very outdated equipment with like this giant record button that you mm -hmm. push before we start. Yes. Play. And the tape spins. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. So here's, so here's the deal. Competition, right? Yeah. Versus competitiveness. Yeah. I think competitiveness is Who's good. the most competitive out of the three of us? Uh, Probably Matt. I'm not very competitive. I would say yeah, Matt. I'm, I always win. <laughs> oh lord! <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, nobody ever beats me. No, I'm definitely, I'm definitely competitive. Super competitive. Yeah. When I get into sports, especially, really, really competitive. Like I have to turn it. I have to be cautious of it and yeah. keep it under control because my competitive will overtake. Will it? Oh yeah, completely overtake me. Wow. Yeah. Well, in a game. Like, yeah, I feel like it takes a lot. Like here's the deal: I love to win, but it takes a lot to make me really competitive. Mm, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. See, I don't care about winning. I know. I'm just really competitive. Isn't that funny? I just, yeah. I just want to be like really good. I just want to win because just, just really good. Uh, cause All like, the time. Because like my first coach said, second place is just first loser. And yeah. I, it, stuck, and, it stuck with me. Yeah, and that's that's a good one. Yeah, uh, she did say that. It's, not, it's, it's the opposite of what they're doing now. Well, of course, now it's a it's a trophy for everybody. Right. You lost, but you get something too. Yeah. No, you don't yeah, because we, you lost. That's definitely a difference between this generation and ours. <laughs> ours was like. Uh, there, there, what was it? Yeah, it's like there's, there's no such, there is no second place. There is no there's second place. There's just nothing. It doesn't even exist. Not in sports. No, no. Um, I mean, so. you, you see at Wimbledon, somebody gets this massive, beautiful statue. Everybody applauds, and another person gets a plate. Yeah. A little plate. They're like, "Thank you so much. Get out of here. You're mm. second. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate it. You made it there. Great job. But you don't need a trophy, too. Yeah. You know, I, I feel like we're not all winners, and that's how we find out what we're what we're good <laughs> at and what we're not good. No, at. No, it's true. Well, actually, honestly, when I was you know, playing basketball, actually, there's only really one winner, yeah. and then the rest are just a bunch of losers. Out of a group of you know, three, but, there's always basically one winner. No, uh, no. So no. And then no. there's silver and bronze. Yeah, but those don't mean anything. No, but listen, Joe no. has this fighting over. Yeah. Silver oh my and god, bronze. you're definitely probably. Well, you guys take turns. You're both bronzes most of the time. But then one of you upgrades to a silver. Mm. But you're never gold, let's be honest. <laughs> no, uh, no, I'm kidding. But no, but what I was going to say is that, honestly, that was so good for me. My favorite sport, as you know, was basketball. Mm. I loved it. But I was, and I was trying my hardest. I was great on defense, mm. but I, I just wasn't a good shot. And I'll never forget my, my mm. coach, Mr. Wolf, said, you suck. You're mm. not good. Yeah. But you know what? I saw you throw a baseball, and mm. you're one hell of a baseball player. And I was a great center fielder, and I could hit the crap out of the ball. So right. baseball and football were much better sports for me. But yep. if I had gotten a trophy and they told me how great I was, I, I would have wasted my time playing basketball. You know, like I would have thought I was better than I was. And you have to be, you can definitely dream big, but you also have to be realistic. Because then you can fine tune your dreams and you can go after them. You know? Yeah, for sure. No, I didn't even think about it that way, but that makes perfect sense because, yeah, I, I mean, we've said this before, but you don't really learn if you're constantly winning. You do not. It's in the failure that you learn. Hi, Andy. <laughs> It's and, yes, yeah, but, no, but you it's know, true. you're you're winning, you're winning, or you're giving it, even though, say you don't win, but you're still giving a trophy. Okay, well, then you're not able to really digest what just happened. Exactly. 
And by the way, where where's the challenge? The failure is good, guys. Where's the challenge? That's the point. Failure is really good. Where's the Stop challenge? Stop taking failure out of kids' lives. That's It's important for them. It, it is. It builds them into the person that they're going builds to character. be. Yeah. Character. It's Thick important. skin. I know. It gives you the tools to Because succeed. I guarantee you, it happens to everybody. Everybody is going to be faced with a difficult time where you fall flat on your face. Of course. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, any. Right. Everybody has that moment in their life. You're absolutely and right. some people, they stay on their face for decades. I know. I and know. then finally get up and change their lives. But the point is, it, it comes to us all. So if, if as a child, if you're constantly not allowing your child to, to fall, yep. when they do fall, Oh my gosh, I agree. 10 times harder I agree. to get up. Yeah, I agree. Andy's over there in his own world. Andy is, you know, Andy is really something, man. I mean, this is this little guy, he, he's not so little anymore, but he was little. I'm about this close to yeah, snapping. I know. <laughs> this close to getting, no. Um, but uh, I, I feel like, not to digress, but I feel like Will Forte could almost say anything. Oh, he's great. And he's so funny, mm -hmm. you know, just like Will Ferrell. So many Wills, you know? I know. Wilford Brimley. It's another, I'm kidding, no. He was a very serious actor. Nobody <laughs> yeah, knows know. him he was Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe. He can Super be funny. funny. He was funny in that, that vampire movie he did. That was yeah. funny. Anyway, but I feel like Andy was born, you know, and then Andy was just mm -hmm. William Dafoe. He was. No, that was John Malkovich. No. All right. Oh, boy. Keep talking. Here we go. Keep talking. It I'll take it. It actually was Willem Dafoe. Yeah. You, oh! So Mm. Ah, daylight, come and me wanna go home. Actually, yeah. I don't know. Go, Mr. Tallyman, tally me banana. Oh, so daylight John Malkovich come was and the me wanna go home. John Malkovich was the filmmaker. Yes. Willem Dafoe was, was the vampire. Yes. yes. And yeah. It was a funny movie. What was it called? Oh, uh, I don't remember. Perfect. Book of, uh, no, that's. No, not Book of Shadows. That's, that's funny. Depp with the, that's. No. Oh, anyway, oh. the point is, Andy comes along, right? Yeah. You and I had this great thing going. I know, right? We were playing. Uh, we, were, we were playing in the front yard with hoses. Mm -hmm. We doing go karts. Go karts. Great things. Yeah. GI Shadow Joe. of a Vampire. Shadow of Vampire. Didn't yeah. I say Shadow? Oh, no, you said you should, Book, you of Book of Shadows. It's a different movie. But. That's a uh, Book of Shadows. Is the um, is the uh, Robert Downey Jr. Uh, um, uh, really? Sherlock Holmes the sequel? Oh. Book of Shadows. Um, oh, great. Yeah. Uh, like but anyway, um, Book of Shadows is also Blair Witch too. Oh, did they name that Book of Shadows? A really? lot of shadows. Out a lot there, of shadows. Guys. Yeah, mm. me and my shadow. Uh, anyway, um, but uh, and and then and then Andy comes along, right? You remember that? We yeah. thought we were getting a dog. Yeah, we thought we were getting a dog. And then Andy comes along. You know, you told the story the other day, but it had a lot more pizzazz. When yeah, you told I'm bored. It in the parking lot. Did I? Did I tell it in the parking lot? At TJ Maxx when we were trying to buy that uranium. Oh yeah, you're right. That's an inside joke. Oh, and then, <laughs> Matt was trying to tell us about this story, oh, and literally, he was saying he was in a mall parking lot, and there was the, the, he saw somebody selling uranium, and there was a DeLorean. No, I and did we were not. Like, Listen, a DeLorean. That is a, <laughs> a minivan is, pulled up. Right, a minivan pulled That's up with, back a to the with an RPG, and there was a guy in a sleeveless puffy vest, and we're like, Matt, that is Back to the Future. He's like. No, it wasn't. I saw it. It was at Pine that Crest Mall. That was my Mall. Thursday night right. at Pine Crest like, Mall. Yeah. No, yeah. it wasn't. Let me no, guess. What? You needed to get it up above 72 miles an hour? It's 88, but yes. Okay. Okay? Maybe 72. See, he's changing it. I know. He's trying to just tweak a little. Just enough. So we don't say that's back to the future. No, it was 72. <laughs> See? Not 88. Matt, <laughs> you just changed that. Just what was it? 72 gigawatts. Is that what it was? No. no. 1.21 gigawatts. gigawatts. Oh, that is what it was. 1.21 yeah. gigawatts. Flux capacitor. Wait. Doc, are you telling me this thing's nuclear? Precisely, Marty. Mm -hmm. Oh, such a great movie. Um, right. But anyway, so then Andy comes along and yeah. changes everything. Really, he did. changes everything with his with his attitude. Yeah. Our parents took us out to dinner. We thought we were getting a dog. We had been waiting for a dog, and they said we're getting a baby brother. And we literally were like, "No, screaming no, <laughs> we were like, no, why? It's so good, just the two of us." I know. And he came along, and somehow he made it better. But it took a while. Yeah. No, it was great. Remember, we 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 didn't put him down. No. Remember that? He didn't walk. He never walked. He, he still doesn't walk. We have to carry him. Yeah, he didn't develop that. legs. Yep. That's why in the pilot of Brotherly Love, he was he was Elvis. He yep. had to do the Elvis thing because Matt, I need to go to the restroom. Oh my god. Yes. Pretty much. Here's the deal. He was potty trained at yes. like nine months. But you had yeah, to walk him there. I you know what's funny is I asked I asked mom about that. I was like, what when was I potty trained? And she goes, You kind of I didn't potty train you. You right. just copied your brothers. Right. Mm -hmm. You did. You did with everything. Right. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks to you, I know how to pee and poo in the toilet. Yeah, and you do a darn good job yeah, at it, buddy. Because we job. only teach the best methods. The best. <laughs> 
We do nothing but the best. All right. You see this right here? Yeah. This is what you do. This is a clean stream. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is how you do it, okay? I feel like Sebastian, right? Maniscalco or yeah. whatever. Oh, my God. Aren't you embarrassed? Aren't you embarrassed by that stream? My favorite um, thing that he says, because it's so true. He's like, um, I, I don't know if his wife is Jewish or if he was dating a Jewish girl at the time, okay. but he was going over Jewish family. You know, Jewish and Italians, they're, they're kind of so similar, similar, right? Family, guilt, it's all the same. He said the only thing that's different is that when you sit down at the table, yeah. it, Italians, you know, like, and the way he does, he's like, I gotta do something. Like, where's the bread and the olive oil? I gotta eat. I gotta do something with my hand, you know. Right, and he's right. very, he's very right. And, and they start handing out pamphlets. And <laughs> he was like, "We're supposed to start reading." He was like, "Where's the pasta?" He was like, "So he said a funny line." He was That's like, funny. "So it's I'll do funny. this." It's funny. I think we should it's allow funny. the Jewish community to uh, arrange the event, but we get the Italians to cook the food and the catering. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's funny. Yeah. It's funny. What am I gonna do with it? Reading. Yeah, you're like, I reading? wanted sauce. Yeah. Uh, no, it's great. It's so so then Andy comes along and he uh, he he changes everything up. Yeah, oh, drastically. Have we ever said we ever told the story about him bouncing and that the bouncer thing? I don't that, know. Oh my god, Andy. So, so cute. look, we were all very busy. Yeah. And Andy comes along and he needs to be Did obviously. Did you forget about taking, me? Or no, we, no, hardly. But you were because we carried you mm -hmm. around for so long. You weren't walking, but you were doing everything else. Talking. Everything. Oh, making jokes. Making jokes. Planning. Planning. Directing, but you couldn't escape walk. planning. <laughs> So balancing checkbooks. What? So mom was Laundry. like, <laughs> mom got you this jumper thing that we would attach to the middle of the. It, it had two uh, door things. frame, yeah. and we had this big like like opening, double door. Right. Yeah. It was to the den that became yes. my room after we stopped bedroom. sharing at sixteen. That's right. Even though I was doing very well, I was sharing a bedroom with you till I was seventeen. That's, that's crazy. Totally isn't it? true. All we were, through all that time, how crazy is that? Yeah. Blossom awesome and everything. Joe's time. Joe and I were sharing bunk beds. Yes. <laughs> I was the most famous 16 year old in the world and I was sharing a bunk bed with my brother. But you know what? I wouldn't trade it for the world, no, bro. That was great, dude. I wouldn't trade it for the world. So then Andy awesome. comes along and we put him in this, they had these two like stirrup things mm -hmm. and this bouncy and it was on cables, suspension cables. Yep. To work his thighs yeah. out so he could walk. It's why to this day he has he legs still has three massive, times. massive, yes. yes. People nice comment legs. about his legs. It's true. In our, in, our, in our videos when Andy jumped up on top of your truck and everyone was like, look at those legs. Mm. Now, of course, he had to add a growl in for himself because, you know, he had to make it larger than life. <laughs> It's true. But uh, so we're putting him in this thing, right? In this bouncy thing. And, and remember, mom Mom was like, you know what? We're just going to see if he likes it. Because mm. it'll be great to keep him occupied because he's yeah. so active. And we got a lot of stuff going on. And he started bouncing. And when and I bouncing. say he bounced. And, and bouncing. And bouncing. And bouncing. Yes. All right. I bounced bounce. for a lot. And we get I it. remember walking we get by. Let's... I'd wake up. <laughs> I'd go into <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> I'd come back. I'd wake yeah. I would I would make four or five trips past that hallway, and Andy would just be happy. It was the same thing every time. Bouncing. He'd have something like yes, yes. We come by, we give him a little treat. He would come by. You remember <laughs> that dog? You kind, kind of. of. Yeah, we, we we always wanted one, so yeah. you were kind of. You our treat, best. We treated you like our puppy. At we first. did. We I wore did. a collar until we I was did. three or four we did. years old. But that was because we didn't want to lose you. With a bell, <laughs> with a bell had, on it. Yeah, we had. We did put bells. We did put a bell on. Yeah, we had really. Oh, I think I had the bell. You I had, had bells. Bell. In your I was feet. sneaky. You were really Man, sneaky. I was sneaky. Mom put bells in your shoes. Yeah, so she we knew where you were. Because Matt would just. I would sneak away. Bells in his shoes. Yeah, I would sneak away on the tips. Because Matt and also I would. I would. I love the outdoors. No, no, God, it got scary. I would sneak outside and walk away outside. Yeah, just around the yards, like a like a year old yeah two i would sneak two. out and two bing. so all right so, let's talk more about me okay back no, i'm just to kidding you. i'm just kidding wait that's kind of cute bells it is on the cute. shoes yeah, yeah that bells, bells on, shoes. on my shoes it really is cool it really is <laughs> it's so yeah i would sneak out everywhere ding, he, ding, ding, i remember ding ding ding, ding, ding. Yeah. maddie it's cute yeah come back here i do remember yep bells, he would just yeah. but andy came along and he was bouncing away like crazy and uh i remember like you said matt we carried him everywhere, everywhere. you and i carried him everywhere. everywhere he really was our puppy yeah he was until eventually mom was like guys you have to put him down and mm -hmm. the crazy thing is he walked so quickly after that so remember that quick. like he knew how to walk sudden, yeah he was yeah. up walking yeah that was like it. you knew how to walk it's just yeah. we weren't letting you i don't walk. really remember this you don't well, yeah. i mean very you were probably vague, like vague, not even two yeah, you were like a year. I have very vague year memories. Year and a half. Yeah. Maybe a year. And maybe. Do you remember that the living room set up at, at Hesby Street? Oh, I remember all of Hesby Street. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. That was, so Hesby Street, We that's the that's the place where we first settled here on the West Coast. Yes. Settled here in this country. Yes. We what? came out in a covered wagon. Oh, God. Oh, God. Seven horses and arrived with four. Back then, we didn't have things like running water. Or electricity. That's right. Mm. We had 13 family members. Oh, my. Showed it, up with five. 
We had to eat them to survive. But then this train oh, showed up. Oh. Then this train showed up. Then I got into a fight with a cannibal prostitute. Oh, oh it's God. all. Oh, that's the sham wow no. story. You're making it up. Wait a minute. Stop it, Joe. And then I was trying story. to buy uranium in TJ Maxx. No, oh, I was, no, was going to no, say. No, no, then this weird covered sports car showed up and brought with it a man in white hair and a trench coat. Is this Back to the Future? Was part it a DeLorean? Three? It was a De- right. Well, how did you know, <laughs> guys? This is back we to hit the- it in a barn, and then he got into a gunfight, and he put this piece of steel. Oh, Wait a minute, this God. is Back to the Future. 3. And at the end, a locomotive train traveled through time <laughs> and brought us here. It's Back to the Future. Three, and isn't it? their friends, right? Your friends. You guys ever see a movie called The Three Amigos? Not to uh, digress. It's one of our really. favorite comedies. It is. If you haven't seen it, I, look, it's super cheesy, but it's Chevy Chase, Martin Short, Dude, Steve Martin. You know, it's brilliant. Can I just say that why don't they make a sequel while we still have those gems? Wouldn't that be great? Like, I, wouldn't I you die to see yes. Chevy Chase, Martin Short, and Steve Martin? Well, Martin Short in is still The crushing. Sombrero. Well, they both. So, I mean, and, you I know. Mean, and, yeah, Steve Martin. I mean, this actually, shockingly enough, enough, Chevy Chase is the only one that's not really as active. And I it's know. shocking because he was so, right. so iconic. And yeah. so big, I know. But I would do anything to see those dudes and get Lovitz back in it. Oh my god! And gosh. do like a, a, a it sequel. Would be, it would be so oh, be cool. So great. Oh my god! Oh my gosh. god! I it would be. It. Maybe Lovitz is running the studio oh now. Oh my god! Because remember, he was like the one working. And they have for to dig him up to redo a movie because their studio's right. struggling. Right. Get me the three amigos talkies, back. Talkies, talkies yes. are coming into play. Um, right or whatever. Guys, like, why are we running a studio? You know what, guys? Which, we should and we will. Watch out, Paramount. We're coming for you. You know, Warner um, Brothers. Yes. Oh. Oh, they were brothers. They were. Right. They were brothers. Just saying. Now we're just Lawrence Brothers Studios. I like it. LBS. IBS. What I, right. LBS. IBS. There's a misprint on the oh big. That's, that's we did this. No, we did not. Irritable bowels. We're just, we're brothers. You guys are. Oh, <laughs> this card maker so fired. <laughs> <laughs> Be all the big, the studio the big sign. sign. There it is. All the press and everything. They drop it. Right. Ah. <laughs> is that an, an I L or an L? <laughs> it's a lowercase L. What? Why would you use a lowercase L? I B S. A lowercase. Take it down. It's <laughs> tear it down. Yeah. It's you good. climb up on the it's building. You're good. Doing it. It's pretty good. Actually. Give me a sharpie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You do your growl for the video. Roar, you know, for this? <laughs> ah, it's funny oh, stuff, guys. Boys. That's funny stuff. I remember teaching Andy how to eat. Remember we would just give him like the little, the, little, the, little, the little treats? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. When we, we got in so much trouble gosh, for giving you yeah. treats. You used to leave Reese's Pieces? No. I did. I did. Reese's Pieces? I did. Like E.T.? I did. I did. He was E.T. for us. Remember we hit him in the closet with all of our stuff, other stuffed animals? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, do, I remember like sneaking him around him. Oh, yeah. Like, stuffing him in bags. Oh, yeah. He used to do everything cute. to him. Put him in our backpack. He yeah. He on the top yeah. of it. Andy, it was wild. I put a, like, a, like a, a hoodie in the bottom. Yeah. So it'd be cushiony for you and I'd stick you in my backpack. Dude, it was so wild That's having a little brother. I could it literally so go like this yeah. and pick you up and put you in my backpack. What do you guys remember? We flew to that Hawaii and we didn't have that extra seat. So we, so we just we, put we, you in the old oh carry on. And, yeah. How did I make it? I don't know, honestly. <laughs> I don't know. You survived on a plane for six we, and a half hours. We weren't but. sure you were going to make that one, but you did. No, you guys are evil. Oh we my god! Put you God. in an overhead compartment. You were. Fine. It was pressurized. You were fine. You know? Oh yeah. my god! But yeah. um, it was really neat. You know, I I didn't realize. Like honestly, I wish I could go back because I didn't even appreciate as much as I no, as I, I wanted to. Because yeah. I appreciated so much. But then you know, like you know, you become sixteen. I was driving, and you were only four, and I was like, man, I I. Yeah, there was a period of time where I didn't soak it up as much as I wanted to, and Heck I wish yeah. I had soaked it up more because it was yeah. so awesome. It was just so awesome, you yeah. know. And I and then flash forwarding a little bit further now, I feel I have a little bit of regret because when our parents decided to go their separate ways, Andy was in that crucial age about like thirteen ish, yeah, around cool. there, twelve, thirteen, and <laughs> I was what twenty something, twenty one something, and I. I didn't have the ability to deal with either, so I just bounced, moved out. You had moved out. I had moved out, and Andy and was there, Andy left, to was there left to fend for himself. Yeah, it was not easy. It and he went a little. Uh, he was just it went was a tough. little awry. He did. He did. He was climbing up he the did. trees. I don't know about that. What I'm what I'm laughing at some ropes. I'm I'm feeling a little warm, and I'm just noticing all three of us are starting to sweat. Yeah, it's hot. Oh yeah, I think the air conditioning broke in this studio. <laughs> I'm legitimately uh, starting to sweat. Oh, yeah. And you look listening. <laughs> and I look over at Joe and he's like, like this. his, upper, no, his like... upper lip is getting moist. <laughs> Am I starting to sweat, guys? Oh, 
It's like that scene from uh, uh, the first Batman with the newscasters. Yes. They all start to get the Joker oh, stuff. So oh, good. They all start to look worse and worse yeah, that and was worse. so good. That's us right now. Coming up laughing. in weather. <laughs> oh, my God. With that makeup? Yeah. Yes. That was so oh, good. Funny. That was so good. Um, mm. No, but it was... In so, other news. Yeah. Oh, God. Back to you, Bob. Oh, my God. <laughs> they start looking worse. <laughs> that was great. The first oh, Batman. so good. <laughs> the best Batman, in my opinion. I hate to tell you. In my opinion, the best Batman yeah, so yeah. far. So I mean, it just... I like, you know, I like certain things about the other ones, but man, there was just, in my opinion, pound for pound. No, so Baby Andy had it right. He did. He was the best Batman. He really was. It yeah. was. It was. Can you imagine? Wow. So you got inspired by that Batman. Can you imagine yeah. like kids getting inspired by this more Batman. current yeah. Batman? It's kind of depressing. I yeah. Know. First of all, yeah. It was so much more dreamy, yeah, so much Christian cooler. Yeah, one was all right, but... He became so, I mean, they've made so many memes off it, but he became too intense as too Batman. Intense. Well, it just wasn't. The glowing was the least, red eyes. It was the least, uh, it was the furthest from a comic book. Mm. Yeah. Nolan's. It was very yeah. grounded, which is cool. I love but Nolan's. But the work. adaptation. Some of the best directors. Tim Burton's creation of Batman was. Yeah, just, that's just the best. I mean, it really set the, the, the tone for. It did. Everything. I mean, pretty much everything. Yeah. It did from that moment on. And and, not, and and here's the greatest part too. It gets not overlooked, but sometimes missed. You had this this Michael Keaton playing perfectly this Batman, and then you had his nemesis, Jack Nicholson. I know. You know, Jack the Nicholson. Joker. He turned down. Um, what? He turned down like a the most insane movie roles to be the Joker. I could. I'll look it up if you want me to. Wow. Like you'd you'd be. He wanted to be in the movie so bad. Wow. Uh, that he actually, I'll, let me figure that out. <clears throat> well, look, all I'll talk tell you amongst this. yourselves. I'll, 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 I'll tell you this. And, I, and, I, and, I've, and I've said it so many times before, but my favorite thing about that movie is that, because I think the most important part about Batman is Bruce Wayne. Mm -hmm. That to me is the most interesting part. Because he went through all this pain and he's masking it. He's got all this money and, you know, he had this family history and, and yet his parents were murdered and he grew up with all that hurt, yet he masks it with the self-deprecation, a little comedy, and then he's got, he puts his rage into avenging his parents' death by trying to rid the city, right, of mm -hmm. crime. And that, to me, that relationship, I enjoyed Michael Keaton's Bruce Wayne, like, by far more than anybody else's because I felt like Christian Bale's, in my personal opinion, uh, he understood, like, you know, the most eligible bachelor, but he was a little too slimy with it, whereas I love Bruce, I love Michael Keaton's because he wasn't slimy with it. Well, he, and, didn't, he didn't come off as, like, some, like, and, yeah, and by the way, that was... Bruce Wayne, baby. And, and that, know, like, was, all that, that was purposeful. That was right. Nolan's <clears throat> subtlety to draw you off of... In, and, and Bruce Wayne was aware of that. So I'm saying it's not like he was a sleazy character. He was putting on the sleaziness to draw right. the people off within the movie world. right. Of him being actually yeah. Batman. Yeah, so I it was a front that he was putting on like, to be the sleazy guy and talk like this. Is, I know. You know. I just didn't but appreciate it. I, I get it. I get it. You know what it is, too? You know what I think? And then it's Batman when he was talking like this. It, it was intense. It was very weird. intense. With the red eyes. You know, what, you know what I think? The reason why I feel like um, Tim Burton nailed it so well is because all through uh, cinema, history, any really good story you tell, the villain and the hero are the same. Yeah. It, they've had terrible childhood. Yeah. Something terrible's happened to them. Yeah. It's just one chooses yeah. to make sure people don't feel that way anymore. Right. And, and the other one chooses to inflict the same pain that he felt as a yeah. child on yeah. everyone else. Yeah. One chooses good, one chooses, yeah. but they're the same. Yeah. That is like the classic hero and villain story from back in time. I mean, yeah. it's, it, it plays itself out in all of our historic yeah, it books, it it all does. the way up through all of our movies. And I just think Tim Burton really nailed that he because did. he showed you the Batman. He showed you the Joker. He showed they both, in fact, their paths even crossed when they, they were young. Yep. In fact, they both created each other. That's the And you see, and the way he portrayed that, and then you have two mm -hmm. actors that just also nail it. Mm -hmm. I don't think you have a better, I don't, I've never seen a better villain hero depiction in a movie where yeah. it's just so perfectly on. And the best on. Vicky Vale ever. Uh, you know, I that mean, was so cool. You know, in my opinion. So darn Kim cool. She was great. Incredible. She you was know. great. But it was just, it was just, uh, it was just, it was just perfect. It yeah. was a, it was a perfect movie. Great did, you, movie. did you find out? I can't out? find the exact thing, but I'm looking for it. But there's so many roles that he. I mean, he turned down the the Exorcist. He turned down Jack Nicholson. I this would is, have too. He turned down Blade Runner. Wow. He turned down Indiana Jones. Did he? Yeah. Wow. Well, a lot of the Harrison Ford uh, roles. 
were uh, crossed o- crossed over with Jack Nicholson, but wow. Nicholson turned him down. Harris Ford got him. Wow. Uh, so they they offered the role when Jack Nicholson almost didn't do the Joker, although he wanted to. And he, I hate snakes. He loved Tim Burton. You know, hate him. Um, <laughs> That's good, Joe. Yeah, that, that was good. good. But they offered it to Robin Williams. What? Robin Williams almost almost played the Joker. Oh, oh my gosh. And then Jack Nicholson ended up doing it. That actually would have been and then sick, too. He also, they, he, I'm trying to Jack think. Nicholson turned down one hour photo, which then Robin Williams ended up doing. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. You know what's interesting? And he turned down Cadillac Man. What? You know what's Robin interesting? Did that one too. You it would have been, yeah. t- it would have been Bicentennial Man as well. Wait, what? It would have been Wait, totally man. different. Imagine Jack Nicholson and Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> oh, so that, that, no, that would have been creepy. That wouldn't so have worked. Weird. No, 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 no. No, that wouldn't have worked. Hey, hey however, Mrs. Doubtfire. However, yeah. I'm going to yeah. give my take on Robin's um, Joker. 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 insane. Wow. That would be really cool. Honestly, it would have had the comedic fire that some of the other comedians have brought to the Joker character, but he, 30 years before... Joaquin never would have, he would have bought that menace. Oh boy, yes. Into yes. it. It would have been a uh, Now I'm thinking about it, I'm like, oh wow. The duality yeah. of Robin himself. Yeah. Mm. To be able to bring that to a character yeah. that has that kind of like a yeah. Jekyll and Hyde, he could have played the most amazing Jekyll and well, Hyde. Well, because too. Here's, like, what oh I, my here's what I, well, because. Oh my. Yeah. It's, a, it's like, a shame, man. I He had so much more. I feel like because. So much more. Because Joaquin went full dark. Yes. And the joy was really creepy. I think that. Robin would have brought both. I think the it joy, been the joy would have been infectious. A, because that's what I loved about been a sight Jack. To he was infectious with. 100%. He, you actually liked that character at times. 100%. Yeah. You know, and he was like, it's just something. Oh, like, it was so good. Oh, um, God. You wouldn't hit a man in glasses, would you? Yeah, that was great. Oh, so my God. That was amazing I mean, the way he did dude, that. He was so oh. good. What'd you say? So it would have been different. I don't even it know if it would have been best fit for that movie. Right. I it almost feel almost like been, when Ben, I think Robin's version would have been probably better in a Joker. In, 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 mm. in now, like now. Oh, it would have been unreal. Gosh, He'd be unreal. Been, oh, like honestly, the quintessential. Like, if Robin was still with us, how cool would it be to revisit, <laughs> which I know they've been talking about now, like Michael Keaton's Batman world and Robin be a Riddler oh, yeah, or something yeah. oh, like gosh. a villain now. Oh, oh my. Yeah, and you have Keaton and, and 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 Robin Williams. Oh, like you think about how lucky we would be as 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 fans to go watch those two guys spar. Oh, like it'd be goodness. unbelievable. It'd be awesome. Would, yeah. yeah. You know who Cuz the best wow. part of the Flash you know was Pacino would have made a really good Harvey Dent. Yeah. Great. Two-face. Great. Pacino. Yes. Tommy Lee Jones was good, but the movie was all whacked no. up. And it was too everything was too blown out on that movie. Yeah. Performances, the makeup, the I colors, agree. everything was blown out. I had too much. Too much. It's like a bubblegum. Yeah. Bubblegum, too yeah, much. Too yeah. much. No, they totally lost. See, that's why you said Tim Burton found the most perfect balance between yeah. comic book it was the best, and ground. Oh, yeah. Of a, Hands of down. Sure. It was Hands so down. good. I mean, it was so <clears throat> and, and, and it please, was grounded, but it was, but there still was it was very comic book. I'm telling you, go back and watch. If you haven't seen the first Batman, Danny DeVito, Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. Yeah, that was awesome. Dude. Well, Danny Elfman just Yeah, that was crazy. That is so iconic and so good. Yeah, that that theme is even relevant and pretty much it's not exactly that in chris nolan's but similar but they used a lot of that in in pretty much in the new batman Batman too you know what i loved in matt reeves batman with uh robert patterson there was a lot of that that sort of like but yeah do you know what i loved about the nolan though um i I love the sound design yeah Nolan's. well that's what he does those and those the way they use the cape they used yeah. a cape sound over like a like a, a, a heavy bass right. when those moments would happen to keep you psychologically on the bat. It was so cool, man. That was cool. It was oh cool. my gosh. It was the cool. Sound design, some of those shots like you can't beat Nolan's that, that, team. I and mean, that I mean that you, you yeah, you, that is that is what makes the Woo. best best film is the is the marriage and pairing of Ugh. audio and visual. That really is 100%. And no, that, that is. makes that is. Audio's 50% of I the just, film. I just I just I personally of the film. I just, it was very intense and, you know, just the way Chris Nolan makes stuff and he's brilliant. To me, I just, for that kind of movie, I appreciate not quite As in so the intense, intensity. You know? But Nolan's all about intensity. Dude, even good. even when you look so at him, good. like, I've, I haven't met him in person, but seeing him in interviews, I mean, he's, he's, a, he's an intense human he being. Intense so that's just- So I just loved us the slight bit of quirkiness. There's a tiny bit of levity, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yes, quirkiness. Fan- a little more fantasy. Right. 
but not too much. No, it was still very grounded, dude, it was very a dark, perfect very balance. real. Yeah. It was I mean, perfect, it was, dude. It was yeah. perfect, dude. Yeah, it was. If you haven't seen the original Batman, we're not going to talk about it any further because I'm sure you were just dying to tune in this week and listen to us talk about Batman. I mean, I'm loving it. Yes. <laughs> Who are these guys talking to? <laughs> They're not talking to us. No, well, we are, but we're just saying like this is just one of those kitchen table moments for us where literally, if you haven't seen it, just I'm telling you. Watch it. It's so much it's fun. fun it's guys. just so much fun. Yeah. It's so much you know, fun. Just like having a little baby I, brother was fun. I remember mm-hmm. we were shooting, uh, you were shooting Blossom on Sunset Gower. I might have told this story before, but just a little anecdote. And they were doing pickups for Batman Returns. Oh, yes. Oh. And this big, st- I was a little kid and Batman was my favorite. And the double stage doors open and smoke comes out. And I swear, Michael Keaton comes out in the Batman suit without I mean, his cowl, though. So it looks like, like, I mean, it was like the most can you imagine? unreal thing I've ever seen, dude. I, and he's and the Nikes, because I remember the Batman suit and Batman 2 Returns, he wore Nikes. And I remember seeing the Nikes, like, looking up to the, the spikes and the abs and the symbol. And I was like, oh, my God, Batman is literally 25 feet in front of me. One of the coolest moments of my childhood. So That's cool. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. That's cool. See, for me, when it comes to like the entertainment he industry. He landed. That's where uh, you're starting to make it up, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> for, for me, like one of the cool, cool things was Andy and um, Joe and I were fans of the Lethal Weapon. Yes. Uh, I'm jealous of this story because Mel was my other go to. Yeah, big, big. Martin Riggs was my hero. Big, big, up. big fans of Mel Gibson. By the way, Andy Glover seen at the Lethal time, Weapon was like three. Check it out. It's, or four, even. Those were like too. our movies. And Mel's loved. directing the final installment, yeah, which goodness. is going um, to be. So, um, and I happened, I went on audition and audition and callback and then screen test for a movie that Mel Gibson was in. And I'll never forget it. I'm sitting there. It's me and Elijah Wood. It's man without a face. Yeah, me and Elijah yeah, Wood are right. sitting there. I remember it was down to you and him for that. It was me and, down to me and Elijah Wood. I remember that. And uh, the director, Ver, I mean, the, that guy. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, did all, no, he did uh, the Lethal Weapons. Uh, Dick Donner? Yes. Yeah. So, walk in there. Um, I'm pretty positive because I remember I remember going, oh, wow, this is the Lethal Weapon team. You're probably right. I think I'm 100. I'm maybe on, he produced it or something. Yeah, I mean. I mean maybe, he, yeah. Five, I remember five, because. Um, it was just him. There was no casting director. That's so nerve wracking. There was nothing. It was just these two kids. And I remember Matt. I remember you. Anyway, coming out talking about that. Moral of the story is, we we had been talking about this, and I had grown up in the industry. I don't get really starstruck and whatever, but we had been talking about this, talking about this. And Mel Gibson walks in, and he's actually cooler than he even was on film, dude. And for the first time ever. I got stage fright and I couldn't get a word out. And I remember looking over wow. who I think was Dick Donner. I'm pretty sure, but I might be I'm wrong. Right find now. the director. I'm gonna find I remember right. looking at sure, him and, I'll just do and everything. the director was like, like begging me to, to cause yeah, I think he wanted me to get the role. And he was like, and I just, I, I was like, and I literally said, I'm sorry. I didn't know Mel Gibson. I was like young. I, mean, I don't know, maybe 10 years old. I was like, I didn't, so funny, I didn't know that Mel Gibson, I didn't think I was going to meet Mel Gibson. He's just so cool. I, I'm, I'm, I don't know what to say. And, I didn't get the role. That one went to Elijah Wood because he could say his lines and I'm sure did a very good job with it. So, um, was but that it, was, was my- Was it Man Without a Face? Is that what it was? Yeah, uh, pretty sure. No, 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 Radio Fly. Uh, there was a thing with like a, what was it? It was like a red- Forever Young? Forever Young. Yes, Forever Young. Uh, Steve Miner. Steve Miner. Steve Miner directed that. Who was it then? Wait. He directed- uh, Maybe it was man. Uh, maybe it was man with that. No, no, it was no. It was it was it was it was, it was, it was um, forever, forever young, young because Elijah, Elijah was, was in it. it. Yeah, and that was the one. Did yes. Donner produce it? Probably, probably. I don't know that. I mean, I, don't I, know. I, can, I can take a deeper dive, but you know, I don't want to bore everybody. Who's the studio it. behind it? The studio. Anyway, I, I was a young like, kid. So oh, worst maybe, episode maybe ever. Was, this episode sucks. <laughs> maybe it was that. Maybe it was. Come on, Lawrence Brothers. But I know I recognized even the director. Like I remember thinking, "Oh, I've seen this." The director's face yeah, yeah. as well. Like yep. it's, a, it's a good director. Yep. And he was staring at me, no, googly eyes. No, though. he was. Uh, but I'll never forget. Camera. Like uh, Mel it. starts talking, and he Mel's just camera. sitting there, and he was sweet, but he had no time for a kid who couldn't speak. You know, Mel Gibson. He was just Mel just kind of stood there. I remember the director going like, "Wow, come on, Matt! Like I you know, come on, Matt!" And I, I couldn't do it. You want to hear something funny? I couldn't, was in a screen couldn't test get it once. going that day. I was in a screen test once and. It was for a movie that ended up doing quite well, and I won't say what, but regardless, it was, I couldn't stop laughing. The guy, <laughs> I was working opposite a very well-known comedian at the time. Oh, and you just And laugh. he was making me laugh, and yeah. I could not stop laughing. Yeah. I've never had a moment like that. But he was, I, he was purposely like trying to make it, like, keep me off balance, yeah. but he was being so funny, and I, I couldn't you stop just laughing. laughing. I lost out, yeah. I, you, I know, was, you know what's funny? In the same way, 
that Mel Gibson, and no, I love Mel. And this is, I mean, I was just a kid in an audition room, so don't take this. But personally. I think he stared me down. But he was being rude. But these are, like, but these are two, two examples I have with two, you know, very well known and great actors. Mel didn't have time for me not knowing my lines. Robin, on the other hand, took a personal interest and got me the role by doing things to make me remember my lines. That's so cool. So, have you always had a problem not remembering lines? No, but I mean, in those big moments, sometimes. In the future. <laughs> Get it out. In those big moments, actually, those were the only two, those were big moments. Like, of course. It, there was a lot of pressure on a 10 year old to go into those rooms. <clears throat> so, but, you know, it's just funny how one guy, and, and he got me the role, and the other guy just didn't, you know. Yeah, I wasn't. Think wasn't, about it, and, yeah, you know, I, but it's interesting it. how somebody can have such a, a drastic impact in your life. And when they take that investment, yeah, nothing How like did you, it. When you, when you did Bean, did, did Rowan Atkinson, by the way, if you don't know who Rowan Atkinson oh, yeah, is, you probably Bean should. Bean movie. He was a brilliant, oh, he's he a brilliant is. English comedian. Awesome. Uh, you know, uh, mime, like he does everything. Physical comedy. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, Mr. You, Bean. Well, Mr. Bean, yes. Yeah. But did, did you have to screen test for him? Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, and they're all super British. And, and right. And the demeanor... Oh, is dry. It's very different. Very yes. Dry, yeah. Very professional. So how did you know? Dry. I actually never asked you this question. Yeah. How, how did you? How did you get that? How did how you did know you, you got that? it? I mean, the same way as, you know. Just I, being overly it? confident like you are right now. Exactly. <laughs> uh, how did I know, Joe? <laughs> what are you doing? What do you mean? The minute I walked in, I knew I booked that one. <laughs> I walked in the room and I got it. <laughs> no, I, uh, I don't. Check. I auditioned. Oh, I auditioned. Like, no, I know A bunch you of people. Yeah. And then I had a, and then there was a chemistry read where they brought me in with him and the, the dad, um, Oh, he was cool. He was amazing. He uh, still is yeah, cool. What Ali, am I saying? Ghostbusters, he's great. And yeah. uh, and then, I, yeah, I, I don't know. They called and said they got it. Wow. Yeah. Who was the dad in that? By the oh. way, your hair looks fantastic. Does it really? Absolutely. I didn't wash it today. Well, while Matt and I were talking, you were spent the whole 30 minutes Just running my hands through it. Great. I know. It should look great. You know? Oh, man. I don't... Andy, I love Andy's flip. Every time before we do our little IG videos, by the way, thank you so much for all the love right out there about just... That you're, I don't know. You guys just are watching these silly cool. videos that we go. do, and you guys are just. Johnny I, Galecki was in that movie. Was he? Wow. Sandra O. Oh. What? Wow, it's pretty good what? cast. Andy. Ron Howard. Burt Reynolds. What? I remember no. that. What? Burt Reynolds. Reynolds yeah. yeah. But at any rate, um, you guys are just being so supportive and just like no. it's so cool. You know, just we do these silly things, and honestly, we're new to this and just trying to do these things for you guys and make you guys laugh. And you know, the response has just been overwhelming. So thank you for that. That's just a little side note. Yes. But anyway, so you had to, you had to screen test, and Rowan was in there, right? Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. awesome. It was dude. good. I remember, and then I, the, the, we had the one of the craziest st stories uh, was I did a movie Jack Frost with Michael Keaton. I know. Which yeah. was sick. not weird. Yeah. My hero. I know. It's so sick. Oh, um, that goes back to that visualization probably, thing. Probably. You know? Uh, he was I, I got one for well, that, but I'll let Andy finish. So uh, originally, I got the the that movie was uh, George Clooney was actually playing the lead. It's so cool. And I got his son because oh, I look like George Clooney. Wow! Goodness. But then, and Kelly Preston was the mom. But then George fell out, and they put in Michael Keaton. And I, both Kelly and Michael, are blonde hair and blue eyed. Mm. And I was a brunette, so they gave the role to a very talented actor who's still who's a going, wonderful yeah, he's actor. Going on. He's, and he's a good buddy of mine. I've yeah. known him for years, and this is a very good guy. I love uh, but that. Joseph Cross, very talented dude. Yeah. And he killed it. Very fun. But the director felt so bad and knew I was so crushed that he gave me his best friend role. So I still got to be that's in the movie, so cool. which was great. Ah, that's cool. Well, you want to hear something funny about weird full circle stuff? So one of the first times that mom knew that I had some sort of like, you know, like ability beyond just being a little normal, like whatever, mm -hmm. 13 month old or 18, 16 month old or whatever. It was 16 months, I think. And I was singing. She asked me to sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. And when I picked up the microphone, you know, because they had those old cameras where the camcorders back in the day, the mic was attached like on a yeah, cord. You'd put right. it out there on the floor. That's right. And you'd be 10 feet. You'd be like, talk, you know. Yeah. So, and I walked over hard to Hardwired, huh? Yeah, it was hardwired. And I was singing, wow. and she was prompting me to sing. And we've seen this video. It's yeah. so weird to watch it. But, and then I bend down, and I pick up the mic. Yeah. She never told me to do that. And I pick it up the mic, and I start singing, staying alive. I know. Ha, 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 staying alive. And then, wow. crazy enough, I was obsessed with that song. Yeah. Uh, I, I and, even remember this. And we couldn't watch. They obviously wouldn't let us watch Saturday Night Fever. That was crazy. No, but, the, but honestly, 19, the reason why Joe wanted... there, there, There's an element of John Travolta as right. a part... As being right. a part of why Joe wanted to be in the television, which right. is why we were all here. Right. Flash forward. Right, flash forward. Wait, so then Staying Alive, Staying Alive came out, which was right. the sequel to Saturday Night Fever. That was our favorite movie. And... It was Matt and I's favorite movie, Dressed kids, by which is Sylvester so weird. Sylvester Stallone. Yes, we which, loved by the it. way, I don't know. Look, the movie Frank Stallone. He put his brother in it. Yep, we love the movie. That. Cynthia Rhodes. Yeah, by the we way, love that some movie. Great music. And let me tell you something. John Travolta 
The dancing was in awesome. that movie. He was awesome. It's unbelievable. You can say what you want about yeah. that film. I love it. We I, love we it. We loved it as kids. We man. dressed up and did that. Yes. We did that. Dun, 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 yes. Watch the movie. We put like a lamp on its Remember side. That? Remember that? Yeah. Dude. Dude, 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 oh my dude, gosh. Dude. Anyway. So, and then crazy enough, I ended up auditioning for a movie called Chains of Gold that John did, which is which which was set in Miami with the whole drug yep. trade. I got, got that it. film. I worked with John Travolta. And then, of course. And then two years later, Blossom came along, and I got to play a a a, a dumb jock who like, was obsessed with girls, which is the character that made John Travolta famous for before he ever did movies. And, and they compared me to him. He becomes a family friend. And then he became for, a family friend. And, and it's just so it's wild. So that's right. that visual. It's so cool. Right. Anyway. Anyway, guys. Uh, wow. Have we spent really the 45 minutes talking? Another know. episode I have no pod idea. To pod, another baby. episode of the pod. I just pod. have no idea what we talked about. Me but either. I hope but you found it interesting. I think we actually had notes to talk about uh, stuff We today. did. We were supposed to talk about something and Our we didn't. Our producers were like, this is what this episode's about. <laughs> and I don't think we talked about any of those damn Nothing, things. Nothing, so I'm sorry. But we talked about silly stories yeah. and Andy potty training yeah. So and a bunch of other stuff. Anyway, guys, Thank God you. bless. We love you. Love and support you show us is astounding. Yep. We are here every week because of you guys. We never forget that. Thank you for and watching the podcast. And week. we will be here every week. Thank you. Have a beautiful weekend. See you next Friday. God bless. Thank Bye you. Guys. Watch Thank the you. podcast, everybody. Woo. Hey guys, the Lawrence Brothers here to thank you for tuning in and watching this episode of the Brotherly Love Podcast. And for exclusive weekly bonus content, join our Patreon now. The link is also in the description. And we will see you guys next week. Next week. Next week.